Grass clippings are supposed to be a gardener's best friend, right? A free, nutrient-rich mulch that saves time, feeds the soil, and keeps moisture locked in. But here's the shocking truth. When used the wrong way, those same green clippings can silently destroy the very life in your soil. Earthworms, beneficial microbes, and fungi, all of them can die off or flee when clippings are dumped or layered incorrectly. And once that happens, your soil turns sour, compacted, and lifeless. So before you toss another load of grass onto your garden beds, let's uncover how to use it the right way, so you get lush, living soil instead of a smelly, wormless mess. Why fresh grass clippings can turn toxic fast. Freshly cut grass is loaded with nitrogen, great news for compost piles, but a potential disaster when layered thickly on your garden beds. When grass is dumped in heavy wet mats, it quickly starts to rot anaerobically. That means the decomposition happens without oxygen. Instead of feeding your soil, it begins to ferment, producing compounds like ammonia and organic acids that suffocate soil life. Worms sense these gases and leave the area, while beneficial microbes die off, replaced by smelly, slime-loving bacteria. This is why many gardeners are shocked to find their once-rich soil turning sour and their mulch layers covered with black, sticky residue. It's not the grass itself that's the problem. It's how it's applied. The mistake that kills earthworms instantly. Earthworms breathe through their skin, and they need a constant flow of oxygen to survive. When a thick layer of grass clippings is laid down, it seals off the soil surface like a plastic sheet, cutting off air circulation. As the clippings heat up and begin to decompose, temperatures beneath can reach 60 degrees Celsius or more. That's hot enough to literally cook the worms in the topsoil. If you've ever peeled back a thick mat of clippings and found a layer of black slime with no worms underneath, that's what happened. Heat and lack of oxygen wiped out the worm population. Once they're gone, you lose nature's best aerators and soil fertility starts to collapse. The right way to use grass clippings safely. To turn grass clippings into a soil-building powerhouse instead of a soil killer, the key is to control how much you apply and how you mix it. The safest approach is to apply very thin layers, no more than half an inch at a time, and always mix them with dry, carbon-rich materials like shredded leaves, straw, or dry compost. Think of it like a compost recipe applied directly on the soil. A 2 to 1 ratio works beautifully, 2 parts dry brown material to 1 part fresh green clippings. This combination keeps air flowing through the layer, prevents heat buildup, and balances nitrogen with carbon so the decomposition stays aerobic and odor-free. If your grass is wet or lush, spread it out on a tarp for a few hours before using it. Letting it wilt slightly releases surface moisture and reduces the risk of matting. Once it's light and fluffy, it's ready to be used as mulch. If you've got more clippings than your beds can safely handle, there's another powerful way to use them. Turn them into a homemade nitrogen fertilizer. This liquid feed not only avoids the problems of thick mulch, but also delivers nutrients quickly to your plants. Here's the exact formula. 2 kilograms of fresh grass clippings and 10 liters of clean water. Put the clippings into a large bucket, pour in the water, and stir well. Cover the container loosely and let it ferment for 3 to 5 days stirring once daily when the water turns deep green and develops a mild earthy smell not foul strain the liquid before applying dilute it one part fertilizer to five parts water and use it as a foliar spray or soil drench this natural tea delivers nitrogen potassium and trace minerals while stimulating microbial activity unlike raw grass mulch it won't heat up or suffocate the soil it feeds it gently The secret to keeping worms thriving under mulch is pretty simple. Worms love moist, cool, and aerated conditions, not soggy or overheated layers. When using grass clippings as mulch, always layer them in combination with something fibrous and airy. For example, start with a thin base of straw, then scatter grass clippings over it. The straw acts as a breathable buffer, absorbing excess moisture and keeping the soil below cool. Another trick is to cover the grass layer with a light sprinkle of compost, or shredded leaves. This not only hides the clippings, which can attract flies when left exposed, but also balances the carbon to nitrogen ratio right where decomposition happens. Worms will move freely through these mixed layers, feeding and multiplying rather than escaping. 
When done properly, you'll notice a fine, sweet, earthy smell when you lift the mulch, not the sour stench of rot. That's a sign your soil microbes and worms are working together in perfect balance. So, how do you rescue a bed that's already suffocating? If you've already added thick mats of grass and your soil smells foul or looks slimy, don't panic. You can fix it. Start by raking off the top layer and letting it dry in the sun for a day or two. Once it's dry, shred it loosely and remix with dry carbon materials like straw, sawdust, or shredded leaves. Spread it back in thin layers, no more than an inch thick. Then give your soil some breathing space. Use a fork to gently aerate the top few inches. You can also sprinkle a small amount of fine charcoal or biochar over the area to absorb excess moisture and odors. Within a week or two, you'll see worms returning and the smell fading as oxygen re-enters the soil system. There are definitely times when grass clippings should never be used. Avoid using grass clippings from chemically treated lawns, especially those recently sprayed with herbicides or weed killers. Even trace residues can harm soil organisms and disrupt composting microbes. Similarly, clippings from diseased or weed-infested patches should never be added directly to your garden. Compost them thoroughly first to neutralize any pathogens or seeds. Also, skip grass clippings in very wet or poorly drained areas. The combination of high moisture and low oxygen will almost always result in fermentation and worm die-off. Used correctly, grass clippings are one of the most powerful, free resources you can use in your garden. But, honestly, the line between feeding the soil and killing it is surprisingly thin. The difference comes down to airflow, layering, and moisture control. Thin, mixed layers nurture your soil. Thick, wet mats smother it. So, the next time you mow your lawn, just remember, your soil doesn't need a blanket, it needs to breathe. Feed it, don't choke it. Healthy soil is alive, and worms are the heartbeat of that life. Every handful of soil they aerate becomes richer, looser, and more fertile. When we understand how to work with them instead of against them, our gardens reward us with resilience and abundance.